Katira tena tatau. Nai ranga mi kia koutou katoa. Um, kwa hau mai ki te whare wananga o tāma ki mā koutou. Uh, nau mai haere mai. Uh, Mōrena ko mere ana tuki tō kuengua. Heuri tēnei nō te whare tapu o Ngāpuhi. Uh, nō te rao waka. Uh, ko au te kai whakurunga Māori ki konei. Um, Mōrena everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Mirjana. I'm a schools advisor with the Schools Partnership Office. I'm lucky enough to be a part of a, a wider team that travel around the country promoting a further education to many of um, your sons, daughters um, throughout the country. Um, and this part, of the, um, this part of the morning is just a bit of um, information about university. Um, so essentially, um, at a university, um, you are currently on our campus. We have a number of different campuses. Okay, the Grafton campus is um, up near the Auckland City Hospital. We've also got an Eps uh, Epsom campus, which is at the foot of Maungafo or Mount Eden, okay, which is where um, education and social work is taught, um, as well as sport, health, and physical education. Um, we've also got a Tamaki campus. We've got satellite campuses out of MIT and Otara another education campus in uh, Whangarei, and then this is our city campus. On those campuses we have faculties which group together common subjects and degrees, similar to a department at your school. Okay, So many of you will have a science department and in some cases a PE department and an English department. These departments or subject areas um, teach courses. So at, at this university we call them um, courses. And as part of those courses, you will be required to attend um, lectures and, in some cases, tutorials and labs. These are the eight faculties um, that you can study at at the University of Auckland. And these are the degrees that fall under, the, under them. So, basically, the Bachelor of Arts is more about your liberal arts, okay, your social sciences and your languages. Then you've got... Um, the business school, which is the home of the Bachelor of Commerce and also property. It's important to note that you do not need a degree to sell a house. This degree looks at things like land evaluation and legislation. Okay? Then you've got the CHI, or the Creative Arts and Industries, um, which is where architecture, urban planning, music, fine arts and dance is. You also have the Faculty of Education and Social Work, which is obviously for those of you who are looking to become a teacher, a social worker, or do things like health promotion within schools and PE teaching. We also have uh, the Bachelor of Engineering, which is a four-year degree with built-in honours. The Bachelor of Laws, which must be conjoined with another degree. And the Faculty of Medical and Health Sciences. The last and our largest faculty is the Faculty of Science, which um, holds the largest numbers of majors. Okay. A conjoint programme. So essentially a conjoint programme is if I wanted to do a Bachelor of Science and then I decided oh, I'd also like to do a Bachelor of Arts and I did them one after the other, it would take me six years to complete them. If I conjoint it, it'll take me four. Okay. So double qualified in a shorter amount of time. For obvious reasons, you cannot conjoin everything, like medicine, as an example. Uh, mostly because it would cost you a lot and also it would take you a very long time to complete this. You also can't conjoint things like education because more often than not in your first year you are already shadowing um, and on placement. Entry requirements. Now this is really just for um, those parents in the room um, because we understand that your children don't want to explain to you exactly what they need to do to get into university in some cases. So very briefly, I'm just going to explain mostly so that parents have an understanding of what your, sh what your children should be attaining while they're still at high school. Entry requirements. So there are four steps, okay? It's important to note that not all four steps apply. Um, I will be... Um, speaking on both, um, all entry requirements, so NCEA, CIE or Cambridge, and also IB. So, step one, four, university entrance, NCEA. This is what it looks like, okay? So, essentially, at level one, which is year 11, students need the 10 numeracy credits. At level two, year 12, they need 
10 literacy credits, five credits in reading, five credits in writing. And at level three, they need a minimum of 60 credits, including 13 subjects, oh, 13 credits and three approved subjects, okay? The university has nothing to do with what is or isn't approved. Uh, if they have questions about the subjects that they're currently studying, they must go back to the careers advisor or the school. This is university entrance for those students who are currently um, doing Cambridge examinations. So you need maths at a D grade or higher for your IGCSE, okay? You need English at an E grade or higher for AS, at AS levels. And then at AS or A levels, you need 120 points on the UCAS tariff. This is step two. This is how we calculate rank scores, okay? So this is specific to how we calculate rank scores here at the University of Auckland. So basically we take 80 of your best credits from level three and we weigh them by what they're worth, okay? So if I was a year 13 student this year and 80 of my best credits are all at achieved level, 80 times two is going to give me a rank score of 160, which means that I could get into a Bachelor of Arts. I would be five points short of most of the majors in a Bachelor of Science, and there would be no way that I could get into engineering, okay? If I wanted to get into engineering with that rank score, I need to be getting those excellences and merits. Does everyone understand? And it's only level three credits. This is how we calculate rank scores for those students who are currently completing Cambridge, okay? So we take your UCAS tariff, okay, across the best six subjects, okay? As you can see, your A levels are worth more than your AS levels, okay? And it's similar to how you calculate the rank scores for NCEA. And that's step two. If that is all you require and you get university entrance, step one, and you attain the rank score, step two, and that is all you require, you will be offered a place, okay? Same with IB, okay? Only these six degrees have subject requirements, so this is step three, okay? I'll start from the bottom. So for anyone who's interested in studying engineering, okay, basically you need all of the external credits in physics and calculus, okay? Health sciences and nursing, as well as commerce, property, and architecture, mean that you need to have table A and table B subjects. This is table A, and this is table B. So, anyone who's interested in architecture, so long as you have one table A and one table B, okay, you will meet those subject requirements. For the Bachelor of Commerce and the Bachelor of Property, so long as you have three subjects from either side, so you can have one from table A and two from table B, or vice versa, so long as you have three that fall within that table, okay? Also, so step one is university entrance, step two is rank score, and these six degrees have subject requirements. If you meet all three of those requirements, again, by law, we must offer you a place, okay? This is table A and table B for those students who are doing Cambridge. And this is step four, okay? So essentially, um, these are the creative arts and education and social work. So uh, for things like music and dance, you will be required to complete an audition, but it's not like X Factor where they stand you up in front of them and attempt to rip you to shreds. Um, essentially, it's, if you're going for music, then you can submit, you can either come in for an audition um, or you can, sim you can send us a URL of you performing or somebody performing something that you've composed. Um, if you're going for dance, uh, they usually try and get you to come here. They teach you a set at the end of that set then they, they contact you following that, okay? There's also a written statement for urban planning just to kind of get a gauge on what you already know about it. And then the portfolio, which can be uh, uploaded online, uh, is basically, there are, I, I would definitely advise for those of you who are interested in fine arts and architecture, when it comes to your portfolio, if you haven't already submitted it, um, to go to the workshops later on today, okay? Also for education and social work, uh, 
Uh, in some cases, there is an interview just to make sure you're not crazy. Um, and also, please check. Um, so there has been some miscommunication um, with the Academic English Language Requirement, or the AELR, okay? So it is only recommended that students come to us with the 17 English credits, and it can be a mixture of level two and level three, okay? Some schools have made it compulsory. We will still take the students in saying that in place of your one options or what we call general education course here at the University of Auckland, you will be required to do an academic English writing course, okay? Just because um, I know myself that many of them don't understand how to reference things and, and have an understanding of that. So just in place of that, um, you will be required to do an academic language course. Oh, English language, sorry. So very quickly, how to apply, it's really straightforward for those of you who have not yet applied. You just, everything is done online, okay? Here's some university terminology for you. I'll start from the bottom again. So at school, um, students will have four terms. At university, we have two semesters, okay? Points, um, the best way for me to describe it is using an NCEA um, student as an example. Points are almost like credits. Okay, so these are the credits slash points that you need to attain in order to pass to get to the next level. Your elective, okay, is something that you elect, okay, that falls um, under the same umbrella of the faculty that you study within. So if you're doing a Bachelor of Arts, you can do anthropology as an elective, okay. General education is your one opportunity to do one options course outside of the faculty that you study in. So elective, under the same umbrella, general education outside of the umbrella that you, in which you study at. Okay? Another terminology that I always like to explain to many students is that they don't have a, a good understanding of major and minor. Okay? So if a student wants to study a Bachelor of Science and they want to major in something and minor in something else, essentially, so in one year, in a single degree, you have to complete four courses, okay? If you are majoring, the majority of your courses are going to come from that subject. So if I wanted to major in comp sci, okay, my five courses would be the majority and my minor could be in physics, okay? So that's the major and the minor. Obviously, if you double major, it's equal amounts of both. These are some of the things that you can study with your general education. The last time I looked at the schedule, there was planet, stars, and galaxies uh, that you could study. Um, art appreciation, where you go around to all the art galleries and write about what you think that they were trying to um, create. Uh, this is an example of what a timetable uh, might look like. Uh, I can tell you now for anyone who is interested in studying um, biomedical sciences, I'm not telling you this to scare you, there's not a lot of white, okay? Um, and, and the white comes in at about lunchtime and that's about it. Uh, also, um, for many of you um, who have travelled really far, I, I do come from a wider team and many of us, if we haven't already been into your schools, we will be coming um, and we will also um, be doing course planning and course advice to help you to build these timetables so that next year, um, hopefully when you choose to come and study with us, um, the, the transition to enrolling yourself okay, is easier. So it's very different. We're not going to give you a timetable that says at nine o'clock you must go to history and at 10 o'clock you must go to geography. You must actually create this timetable for yourself and it's our job to help with that transition, okay? So if you haven't seen anyone from our team just yet, make sure you go to those course planning sessions. This is just some of the fun stuff, okay? So while, you know, we, we have um, a lot of um, academic support, okay? There is also life outside the lecture theater. That comes in the form of orientation week, okay? So there is a lot of things happening at O-Week, okay? Um, there's a lot of free stuff, there's a lot of free food. Um, so find all of those. There's some concerts, there's some comedy club nights. Um, there's a lot of um, sports as well that you can go to. 
into faculty sports. So if you play sports to represent the region that you come from, or even New Zealand, you can continue to do that. Okay, you can also represent the hall of residence that you live in, the faculty that you study in, and also the university at university games, okay? This is just a photo that I found, but you can represent them in things like, there's tennis, there's even futsal, whatever that is. Um, <laughs> there's like ultimate frisbee, and there are a whole heap of things um, that you can compete in. Um, every year we have a great wakama race that's so popular that we run out of waka. Um, so essentially what that is, is it's a 12k paddle Turangi Toto, which is the volcano out in the Waitemata. Um, students must run to the summit, run back down, and then paddle the last 12 back, okay? Winners of that get an all expenses trip paid to Hawaii. They are currently there, completing in the, oh, competing in the Queen Liliokalani, which is a 30 mile paddle. Last, for the last two years, engineering has won, okay? And they came second in the men's um, last year in, in Hawaii. So if any of you paddle, um, you're more than welcome to start your, your own team up and hopefully take the title off engineering. Uh, the Clubs Expo is a great way for you to meet like-minded people, okay? Um, so at high school, for those of you who are um, still high school students, um, you might find it hard to find a lot of like-minded people the benefits of um, the clubs here is that there are a whole heap. The most popular club that we have currently on campus uh, is the Meat Club, um, Eating Meat Club. Um, they were created um, in opposition to the, to the Vegetarians Club. <laughs> um, and basically, every few weeks they have uh, a barbecue, so sausage sizzles and stuff like that. If you pay to be a part of their Meat Club, you get to skip the line. Um, so I believe it's 15 to $20, I think, a year, maybe $30, I might be. You, you pay for a yearly fee. Um, they give you a T-shirt, and they also text you. They're like, hey, we're in the quad, having a barbecue. So if you're in the meat club, you can skip the whole line, and usually it goes forever, because free food. Um, and so that's one of the clubs. Second to the meat club is the dessert club. Um, <laughs> where they send you vouchers to go to places like um, Giapo. Um, so those are some of the clubs, but I mean, also if you have, a, I don't know, a passion for Justin Bieber, you can create your own club as well. These are some of the clubs that we have here on campus. I'm just gonna change that. <laughs> So obviously, as you can see, there are a whole heap of clubs that you can join, okay? Um, there are cultural clubs, there are snowboarding clubs and walking clubs and underwater clubs, okay? And you can join more than one. It's your way to find people who are like-minded, okay? Um, also, um, support services. So there are approximately 42,000 students here at the University of Auckland. Don't worry, they're not all here at the same time. Um, but basically, it's not like when you're in high school. If you need the help, you actually have to be proactive about coming to us and seeking it. There are people who get paid to help you, okay? So I'm not just talking academics as well. We also have a number of counsellors and doctors, okay? So the academic side, there are academic advisors in all of the faculties, okay? And then there are also um, counsellors and um, a whole heap of learning centres. There's also the careers hub as well, the careers team. So for those of you who are looking for opportunities while you're studying, there are a number of ways that you can get internships. Um, every few weeks I also get emails asking if I know students who are interested in or who are currently completing this major and would be interested in, I don't know, a placement at ASB Bank, okay? So they will help you with writing your CV and cover letters. They will also interview you as well um, if you haven't um, ever been interviewed before. So this is the support that we have for you. Okay. This is just a, a list so that you can see. So even the support stretches out to all of the halls of residences as well. So you don't have to worry if you're in the halls of residences about not being supportive, supported. 
Um, although if you aren't going into the halls of residences, again, you are welcome to all of the services that you see behind me as well. This is just um, a screenshot that I took from the Careers Hub, okay, which essentially um, is the necessary steps that they can help with um, to get you place it, uh, placements. Um, also, um, for those of you who are interested in travelling, we have a 360 abroad program, which is usually done in your second year. These are only the countries that we um, send students to. There are, I think, like 90, 90 plus universities that we have partnerships with, um, where you can go and study in your second year. Okay. The benefits, I guess the major benefits of this is that you will not be paying international student fees. You will pay exactly what you pay here to go to the University of Southern California. Okay. Finally, this is my last slide, I think. Um, basically, this is the information for all of the faculties. So if you um, are struggling with an application um, or you have a few questions, um, my advice would be to take this information down also, if you wanted additional support or some guidance on the majors or the double major that you're looking at going into, this would be a good way, or this this would be a good um, contact for you to um, to make to make contact with. Cool. Other than that, thank you all so much for being here. I understand the weather is not great outside, but have a lovely day, and we're here to answer any questions you might have.